Hey, hello, welcome to Friday Night Live. I'm back. I didn't co go live last week because we was busy. We was busy and I can get into that. So if you are meeting me for the very first time, hello, my name is Tracy Collins. I am a businesswoman and I recently located here from the United States, Atlanta, Georgia to San Miguel de Allende with myself, my honey, and our 19 year old daughter and our dog Brownie. I always forget to mention him. You'll see, you see him in my videos, but like, <laughs> I forget to mention him. And so this on, on this channel is where I discuss especially on Friday Night Lives, I talk about like my life in Mexico, our transition um, from abroad. We're recently uh, newly transitioned. We're going into month three and we had a tumultuous, who almost two months in Mexico City. So if you miss that, make sure you go back and watch those videos. Um, but in the last month, almost month, we've been here in San Miguel de Allende. So today, make sure you drop... Um, Oh my God, I don't have my comments on. Hey, hey D. <laughs> um, so today I'm gonna talk about why San Miguel de Allende and how it stood out among all the other places that we visited in the country of Mexico during our scouting trip before settling and deciding on San Miguel. So um, just to give you a little bit of backstory, we started our scouting trip in June of 2022, and we ended our scouting trips because we took multiple ones in February of 2023. And during that time, we visited, I don't know the number of cities, so I have to do it in order. Hey, H and D, uh, ready for the discussion. Um, if H is not on with you, D, tell them we said hello. We can't wait to meet y'all. We love the vibe y'all have. We love coupledom. I know, Cedric, see, I digress. See, I have the attention span of a gnat. So y'all got to say, focus, Tracy, focus. But <laughs> um, um, Cedric and Bobby are going to be here, I think, at the end of the month. So we've been communicating a little bit, um, helping them just get some information that, you know, she needed to help prepare for their trip. So can't wait to see y'all on this side. Um, but so we visited in our scouting trip, we went to Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Tulum, um, Merida, Mexico City, uh, Puebla, <laughs> Guadalajara, and Puerto Vallarta. Okay, so we kind of hit all of the, the, the major spots in the country. And San Miguel was always on the list to go visit. But then I was like, you know, we didn't think that it would be one of the contenders at all. It was never like, oh, this is going to potentially be a spot. This is why it was never one of the target cities that we went to go visit. Oh, H is watching too. What's up, H? <laughs> Um, so it was never, and you know, guys, I'm holding it down for honey. So I always have honey's notes in here too. I just hung up the phone. She's actually in the States right now and, um, getting some things. And you know how it is. I was like, folks, was like, can you bring this back? Can you bring this back again? I digress. Okay. Focus, crazy. Focus. Okay. So Friday night live. So that was all of our, our, our scouting trip cities. And a lot of people will probably ask, well, why just Mexico? So let me be very, very clear. When you are a black female and you are gay or in a same sex relationship, our options become very, very limited as far as where we can be accepted and live comfortably without being bothered very limited. But I'm also from California. So I grew up around Mexicans. Like my oldest daughter is half Mexican. So the culture was is really easy for me to assimilate. I've always loved Mexican culture, always. However, never had the desire to come to Mexico until May of last year. And when I came, this was the only country that I can visit it more than once. I've been to other countries, but Mexico literally stole my heart. So I want to talk to you guys about why San Miguel? So when we arrived here, we needed to just get out of Mexico City. <laughs> and we and a lot of things have confirmed that for us since even being here. But we just needed a break. We when you come out of transitioning from the United States, that is a task within itself. And what you think you're preparing for, it's a whole nother ball game when you land. Okay. And, you know, D I know has recently heard me say there's, it's a difference between when you are scouting 
versus literally trying, no, vacationing versus scouting versus actually trying to to plan your life and get settled. There's, those three are very, very different from one another. So what we did was when we came to um, San Miguel de Allende, we we called our driver, you know, and he already knew us and he knew like, okay, we're this is where we're going. And he had been, he picked us up from the airport when we first landed. Um, so we took the three hour drive and just the, the drive, once you get out of the city, so you have to hit three major states. Um, it is, you're in Mexico, in Mexico city. I think then there's Hidalgo, I think, and then Cretaro and then Guanajuato. So I think it's four, you hit four. And in that process, you begin to, at least we did, we began to kind of like, we, I felt the anxiety and the pressure leaving our bodies the moment we left the city. And then as we're coming into like Queretaro and then we're hitting Guanajuato, the scenery was just captivating. So like we're all in the shuttle and everybody's awake, but everybody's looking out the window because we're too busy paying attention to the nature, the uh, mountains, the cacti, the succulents, like all of the, the, the beauty of the, the, the countryside around us. We're seeing cattle, we're seeing sheep, we're seeing horses. And it just was like, you know, our bodies just began to decompress. And, and that's when ease started coming through the door that moment. And so what happened was we come to our Airbnb and our Airbnb is is considered far out from the centro, but it's it's a nice development. It's almost just as you start to enter the the city of San Miguel D I N D itself. And but it's a beautiful development. So we come and we get settled, blah blah blah. And the the moment we get here, I would say probably in the next day or so, we get connected with somebody who had who was like, "Hey, I'm here for you. Um, what do you need? How can I help you?" And it was somebody that we met in Mexico City. She put us in touch with her friend who lives here, who's 29 years old from Los Angeles. He tried Mexico City, and he was like, "No, I can't do that. I can't do that. I I need this. I came here, and it was easy for me." And to hear him say that, and he's and he's Mexican. And to hear him say that, it was like, really? So just to hear like we had similar aligning experiences. And so, and I'm saying all of this to say, I'm leading up to what, you know, getting into the details is because that is when Eve started to walk through the door. Uh, oh, I'm freezing. Oh no, the internet, y'all, it's Mexico internet. I can't do nothing. I can't, and I'm right by the, the modem or the, the, the box. So, um, so I'm sorry about that. Hopefully, you know, it'll be consistent because I'm always in the same spot. So, um, so anyway, so that's when E started to walk through the door and from here on out, what we start, what we started to gain immediately was community. San Miguel was nothing like what we had anticipated. We came here not with the intent on staying. It was like, eh, maybe, maybe not, you know. But within the first week, we knew that this was going to be the place, and it was actually less than a week. I would say probably within the first four days. Um, oh, I'm okay. Good, I'm not freezing for you guys. Okay, I'm good. Okay, good, good. So, and I say that because we started to gain community immediately, immediately. So it started with our friend Rolando, who we actually, me and Mahogany, went and hung out with him last night. Um, and he's like, Tracy, whatever you guys need, just let me know. And literally, you guys, that has been the sense of community that we have gained the moment we we got here. And we are talking about from the locals, from, from the Native people. Um, and just the the meeting people, the ease of meeting black expats or meeting black immigrants who have come to this part of the country and we meet people all the time. And so because San Miguel is so small, there's two, well, there's like four major grocery stores and there's um, mercados throughout, you know, sprinkled throughout the town, but there's like La Comer and then there's City Market and they're pretty much right across the street from each other. But if it's like the meeting spot, like you go grocery shopping and then it's the meeting spot. We're like, hey, you're black or hey, what are you doing here? 
And how'd you get here? What's your story? What's your, I mean, you will spark up a conversation with somebody immediately and literally be like, we here, we've been standing here 30 minutes talking in an aisle. Um, and we met another couple friend. They um, were from the Bay Area and they have, they bought a house here in San Miguel and they have been going back and forth for years, years, years. And she and her partner bought a, a house here in San Miguel, beautiful house. It's three properties on one lot, beautiful with a center courtyard, I, you know, and I think they said it was around 400,000. I'm not exactly sure, but, um, and, and this place is aesthetically pleasing. So aside from the ease of assimilating into the community and people literally welcome you with open arms, it's like they were happy to see us coming. I think they're used to seeing they're, they're used to seeing white folks, but like with us, we, you know, we stand out. I'm bald. She hardly don't got no hair. We currently, that I know of, are the only same-sex Black couple that is in, we, you have other couples, but you have, we're the only one. So we stand out, like as far as the same-sex couple. And we have our teenage daughter with us. So people will recognize us immediately. And so, <clears throat> oh, question, question, question. Uh, can you compare the contrast with Puebla and Mexico City? I mean, and um, San Miguel, absolutely. Um, and mind you, we were only in Puebla for just two days so I a weekend we didn't get the opportunity to really explore the outskirts of Centro but what I will say that we saw now aesthetically it is just as beautiful as far as from a, a culinary standpoint Puebla is also known for food high food quality the difference is the folks looked at us like what are you doing here we don't get to see many people that look like you here and San Miguel they could care less they could care less when you talk about being black and you can walk into a space and people are not following you because we got followed followed a lot in Mexico City and that's something that I never shared going into stores, which I don't even know why. Like by security, like <laughs> it was really weird, um, but they don't care and it's just you are a part of the community and it doesn't matter how many of you there are in the community it's just you're a part of the community and here honestly you guys a lot of people speak english and the reason for that is because a local told us he said um um we speak english here in san miguel and i think it's due to the history of of you know the the veterans and the art school being developed back in the 1940s and moving forward so they're used to people who speak english being here and of course that's how they make their dollars too but aside from it being a tourist place because in central it is very touristy and it's beautiful we've been in central my daughter and i for four days straight just you know, just exploring and having fun. And today we went shopping because I wanted something in particular that I knew I could find there. But you get on the outskirts and it's very residential. You can have a beautiful, you know, you can have an apartment in a beautiful gated community. You can have a townhouse in a beautiful gated community. You can have a home in a beautiful gated community or not, it doesn't have to be gated. And I wanna to talk to you guys too about our rental process and how easy it was for us to not only find our home, but get in our home. After, and I'm so grateful that we, that, you know, we didn't, continue to force the the Mexico City thing because it was really pointing us in this direction where we needed to be. So um, so the people here are nice, the meeting of the people are nice, we, we gain community immediately. And then of course, you know, for people who are familiar with Michelle um, of Casa Elm, like she had a gathering, she's had several gatherings and, you know, you know um, sending her our condolences because her father recently passed away. But we met up with that, with, you know, with the other Black folks in, in, you know, that are familiar with Casa Elm and in Michelle's group of Black um, San Miguel de Allende folks. And that brunch was absolutely beautiful. The location was beautiful. It was on a ranch. It is for people who are who appreciate nature and who appreciate horses. It is very common for you to be in a car going down the street and you got a horse coming right back up next. It, it's just it's just a part of the community. So the fact that we can experience 
the beautiful juxtaposition of small town living with, you know, sprinkles of, of city element, there's a storm happening. So if I start to break up, I just heard the thunder. That is also why. Um, but you have the country piece too. And I think that is the part that lends the ease. We immediately began to feel less pressure. We sleep longer. We sleep better. We... Um, it's a slower pace, but not too slow where you are bored out of your mind with nothing to do. Um, if you want to go shopping and get the goods that you need, like major stuff, we went to Caretro and went to um, Costco and we've been to Walmart out there. But that's not something that somebody would do every day anyway. So you don't necessarily need to have it absolutely close. You can get a car, hire a driver. You can rent a car. Renting a car is super easy here, like extremely easy. Um, a, this is ATV culture, y'all. This is ATV land. You will see horses, cars, buses, ATVs, <laughs> motorcycles. And that is just how it is here. And we um, we we will probably most likely have an ATV before the end of the year, which we were both excited about because I never knew San Miguel was ATV land. And I will make sure I post a video so you guys can see what you know the what it is to have an ATV in this town. But you can go to Central, you can go to the grocery store, you can ride around town. It is just a part of assimilating or being here and being in the community um, here in San Miguel. When people see San Miguel de Allende, they always see Central. So you think that it's just Central. You think it's the hills and it's the cobblestones. And granted, it's cobblestones outside of Central. But you don't get to see the flatlands. You don't get to see the communal living. You don't get to see the horses that are on the street. You don't get to see the outskirts of Central, and that is the piece where everyday life happens. Um, and so it's just so much easier to just assimilate into this community. And it's such a small town feeling. And it's just, it's just cool as shit. It really stole our heart and we did not anticipate it. So I was talking to Honey, like I always do. And she was mentioning, she said it was easier that she thought it was nothing like she thought it was going to be. And it was the ease that she didn't know she needed. And um, she says being from she was born in the country in the outskirts of Alabama. And, you know, she moved to Atlanta when she was in her late teens, early 20s. And she's been there ever since. So almost 30 years in, in Alabama. I mean, I'm sorry, in Atlanta. So that's a big city. So um, me, I was born city all my life, born, raised city. And when you come into a place, it's just like it's the the slowdown that you didn't know that your system, your nervous system, your body needed. And that is what it has offered. Also, you guys, recently I experienced, I lost my bag. I don't know if you guys saw that video, but honey and I, we went out to eat down in Central. We are about 20, about 15 minutes by car from like downtown central. And um, I didn't discover that I left my bag until, oh my God, until we got all the way back here. And all panic was like, I was just like, oh my God, my stuff is in there. And when you were from the city, you were like, everything is gone, everything is thrash. But my daughter was able to track, they tracked my phone. And then she also was able to track my earbuds. So we went back to the restaurant the next day because they had a close by the time we discovered it was gone. And they had had my stuff. They didn't touch it. They put it back behind the counter and they said, here it is. We didn't touch it. And our friend Rolanda was like, they are really nice here. They are not going to touch your things. And for me, that was something that was very reassuring. It was also affirming that this is the place that I need to be. People who are thoughtful, people who are considerate, people who are kind, uh, people who look out for one another. And that is what I felt in the moment. And to take it a step further, um, the property management of our Airbnb, where we we're currently at, he was on it too. He was like, wait a minute. He tracked down the cab driver that we were in to see if it was in there. He um, tried to call the restaurant. They were closed. He went on the Facebook page. He told, later told us, left a message on there. And once I came back 
from getting my bag the next day. He came back to check on me just to make sure that I got it. Like it's that kind of things when people go above and beyond. And when you are not used to that treatment, it just becomes astounding. And for us, not only was it astounding and, and we felt so grateful to, to have the exp experience with them, but we also felt affirmed in our decision um, about being here in San Miguel. Another thing is the traffic is slower paced. I mean, you're not gonna run into much traffic here if you are looking to get away from like all of the hustle and bustle it's slower you will have a little bit of traffic but it's only in certain spots so you are not met with congestion all the time and having to deal with stress and timing of things because you have a lot for traffic so that is another thing that we really appreciated um people mind their business here <laughs> people really mind their business here and my honey said something today she said even the white people are different and what does that mean? She says, you can tell the difference between white people who are vacationing versus white people who live here. White people who live here don't seem to, at least we have not experienced the thing of like the superiority attitude. It's the ones who are vacationing who will look at you like, what are you doing? How did you know this place existed? Versus like the ones who live here, they, they fall back. We have not run into, we have not or have yet to run into anybody being like, oh, what are you, you know, you're not supposed to be here, you know, in the area that our house is in. And I want to talk to you all about our rental experience too. Um, the area that our house is in it is considered, an, you know, a, an upper, an affluent um, neighborhood or a colonia. And um, they walk right by, welcome to the neighborhood. You know, they just kind of fall right back. So you guys are moving in, welcome to the neighborhood. And that's it. And honestly, when you come from America and dealing with, you know, white supremacy and those entitlement attitudes to be in a place where they mind their business and kind of fall back, that's what we needed. Like we needed that. I needed that. You just, you just experienced the kind of disposition that you, did not know that you um, you you needed to have when you start coming into other communities with people. So rental process. So we, um, if you are not familiar with our rental process that we experienced in Mexico City, please go back and watch those videos. But, whew, so we started looking and we looked at two properties while we were here and when we started. Both, which one was brand spanking new. It was one, two, it was three levels, beautiful, um, beautiful rooftop space. San Miguel is known for like their rooftops and the, you know, watch look, the mountains and the sunsets and all of the things. So it had a beautiful rooftop space. It was a beautiful gated community. It was a newer community. And um, they were asking 22,000 pesos a month for rent, which boiled down to be, I think it was like $1,100 beautiful it was a three bedroom three and a half bath beautiful new home it was a gated community too as well um and then we you know we got approved for it but they were taking too long and we you know just came off the cup of of trying to find a place in mexico city and our one of the people that we reached out to sent us this house and i'm like where did this house come from like we weren't sure like we didn't know like the full details of this house so we went to um to a different neighborhood and we went to this appointment with this realtor who we had never met <laughs> and so we go and it is an older older home but not old um not it wasn't brand new and it was everything that we needed and let me tell you the requirements that they asked for money that was it they asked for our id and we we and we gave that to them and, and once we said okay we want to make an offer on this house and because here you can um offer what you want to pay for the rent and so we made an offer and 30 minutes later, because we're now we're in the store. So 30 minutes later, we get a, a WhatsApp message saying, the owner has accepted your offer. When can you bring the deposit? An hour later, because we had to go to the bank, an hour later, we were sitting in the office. We signed the 
the paper for the deposit, the receipt for the deposits, you know, saying that, yes, they've given the deposit. We are holding the house. And it was on a third. It was on a Wednesday that this happened. Monday, we sign the contract for the home. Not only do we actually have the home, they offered to like, if y'all want to buy it, let us know. Like, if you guys want to buy it, just let us know. We will be happy to go ahead and sell you that. It's a beautiful house. And it um, is a ranch. It has a beautiful roof deck. And it, it that was it. That was it. That's all. We came with cash. And they didn't ask for anything else. We didn't have to have no Aval. We didn't have to have no guarantor, which is the same thing. We didn't have to have extra deposits or extra months rent up front. We didn't have to have um, a, a gazillion references. We didn't have to have, even though we could have provided all of the things, they didn't ask us for like um, our job references. It was nothing. And maybe it was more so like, you know, this is how we do it here. And me and honey thought it was just too good to be true. We absolutely thought it was too good to be true. You made it D. <laughs> um, we thought it was absolutely too good to be true because we just went through hell. We went through hell and we were, as the weekend was happening, we were, you know, over the weekend and we got, we got a couple of days free. So we signed the lease on October 30th. And let me tell you how we did it. So D was actually here. Here visiting from Brown Girls Invest too. D was here visiting us from Guadalajara, and so Honey and I was running errands, and we had this appointment. That we knew we had this appointment to sign our lease at 4 p.m., but we didn't tell anybody. We didn't tell nobody that we had been approved for a house because, again, we just came off the cuffs of Mexico City. So we wanted to see, like, is this too good to be true? Are they going to renege? What, what the hell is getting ready to happen? <laughs> <laughs> so we left D and Mahogany, our daughter, in the car. We said, we're going to go look at this house. We'll, we'll, we'll let you guys know if we like it. You can come in and see it. So we signed the lease. We take care of all of the business. And the realtor um, leaves. <laughs> and then so Honey goes outside and she gets D and Mahogany. And then we're like, this is our new home. That was exactly how we did it. We absolutely tricked them because it's like, we need to make sure everything is in ink and signed and the shit is dry on paper. Um, and <clears throat> so that was how we, and it was just so easy. It was just so easy. And everything since we've been here, not saying we aren't gonna run into hurdles, um, has been easy. And another thing, I put in the Facebook group and the, the main San Miguel group, like I'm looking for a housekeeper and, you know, and a, you know, someone who can help us get situated with a house. I mean, not a house, a housekeeper. And, you know, I got several responses, but one of them in particular was like, Tracy, I got the perfect person for you. And she says, DM me. So I DM'd her and um, she says, here's my housekeeper. We've we worked with her for two years. She's looking, two and a half years. She's looking for additional work. She's amazing. I guess she came highly recommended. And so I reached out to her the next day via WhatsApp and we made an appointment to to see each other let me tell you what happened the person on facebook brought her housekeeper who was meeting with me so we all met each other at the same time and it was an old white woman she was like this is our housekeeper you know i just wanted to make sure she got over here okay and i'm just gonna go ahead and go and honey was like you can come in and she was like no mm -mm, i'm not coming in i just you know tracy I, I just wanted to introduce you guys and make sure and that was like that was really thought thoughtful of her so later on that day i let her know Oh, thank you. <laughs> I let her know that um, we went ahead and moved forward with with um, her name is Esmeralda, and she's gonna be helping us. And Miss Carrie, the old white, older white woman, she said, "Tracy, if you need anything else, let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you." And it's not the kind of community to where what's in it for me. When you when you come from America, especially when you black, it's like you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Um, and it wasn't that. And fortunately, her husband, Esmeralda's husband, is a gardener and he's a handyman and he does all of these things. And our our house needed some, you know, landscaping attention. So they are both. This family has now become our extended family and they are helping us get our house together. And that is the kind of community, y'all, I just cannot express how much it has just been 
a whoo moment. Um, they have a beautiful home. Oh, thank you, D. Uh, we get it together, y'all. Um, congratulations on again all oh, for finding the place that's great for you and your family. Thank you. Um, okay, hold on. Thank you. Sorry. So old versus new. Do they have U.S. style outlets? Oh, that's a really good question. I want to bring a blender and juicer. So you will be. So let me say this. Amazon Mexico is here. And um, I would honestly recommend ooh, it depends on where you go, because you can find those things anywhere and you want to make your travel as light as possible, but you also want to make your transition and your land as light as possible and having to buy less stuff would be ideal. But depending upon how you're going to get it here, the cost of getting things here, um, we do have some things in storage and it's not even a lot. And we got a quote yesterday and that's like, you know, almost $10,000 of us just getting the little bit of stuff that we have here. Um, and, but you can go to like, you know, Caretro, you can go to Costco, you can go to Walmart, you can go and get those things that the everyday appliances that you need. So it's not something that um, I would say that you would need to have, but as far as the U.S. style outlets, I haven't seen any on this side, but they have like, when you go, Caretro is huge, it's big, it's busy, and that they speed and over. <laughs> The traffic is bad, um, is massive, you know, so you will still be able to get things, go and get what you need. And if you do decide to make SMA your home, then you will be able to come back to, oh, nice, beautiful. This is just, we just see horses walking down the street, easy um, SMA. So I hope I was able to answer some of that question. Um uh, Oh, outlets. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, do you mean electrical outlet store? So I thought it was outlet store. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to have the universal outlet. Just the, the same outlets as um, as we uh, we do in the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's that won't be an issue. Um, same outlets, the U.S. outlets. Yeah, same thing. Congratulations. Oh. Oh, thank you. Fine, your player was a great fit. It was. It was. It's a beautiful fit for us. SMA is um, for people who need more hustle and bustle, more option and things to do, and and quick and and quick, 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 quick at your fingertips. This ain't gonna be the place. It's 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 not. If you are looking for for ease, if you are looking for. Um, Community, uh, I'm not saying you couldn't find community anywhere else, but if you are looking for a, a beautiful kind of middle ground, I think SMA is more middle ground. Um, and a lot of younger people are coming here to San Miguel. And I heard Michelle mention that too on a previous live. And so you see older people here, but you see a lot of younger people here. Like one of our main folks in the community, Rolando, and I talk about him often, he's 29 years old from LA. And, you know, he tried Mexico City. He was like, uh-uh, girl, I can't do Mexico City. I was about to just get myself wrapped up in too much trouble. He came here and three hours later, he had his own apartment. Um, and in Mexico City, they was asking for everything off the cuff. Every, and he's, he's a, he has dual citizenship. And he was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. So, it just makes it easy to assimilate. And it just depends on if you're looking for, you know, what kind of landing you're looking for, what kind of lifestyle you're looking to switch up and have. Like we needed to switch our lifestyle up. We needed to to let go and to release things and to to be able to really begin to decompress and then also be able to see a pathway forward. And for us, one of the, the dreams that we aspire to have, like as a couple, we aspire to have land and horses. Like we've talked about that and, you know, just as a couple and because we both love to plant, we both love to garden, we both love to grow things, we both love animals, we both love nature. And when we met another person in in the grocery store, him and his wife moved from, um, they moved from New Jersey that came here to SMA, bought land and had their house built. And it's a beautiful home. And I want to, I will put money on the fact I haven't asked him yet, but I will bet my life is less than $200,000 with land and house build included. Um, and if it's over 200, it's not going to be that much more over 200,000. 
Um, so let me see if I miss them. And so our 19 year old daughter is here and Mahogany talks about how much she loves the colors, which I always, you know, I do too. It's like a box of Crayolas just vomited <laughs> here. It is, it's just like a box of Crayolas. Um, so the colors, the architecture, the buildings, the scenery, and let me say this, the safety, the safety here, um, I don't know, y'all. It's just safe. It's, it's, and you can feel the energy. You can feel, and you don't have, you see the policia out, but you don't, they're not, they're not like you're in Playa del Carmen or in Cancun. No, no, you know, shade there. Cause you guys know I love Playa, but it's not like that. It's not even like Guadalajara, D. I know you're in Guadalajara, <laughs> but Guadalajara be having policia everywhere. Um, it's, it's, they're, they're here, but, you know, they're on the ATVs, <laughs> they in they cars or trucks, they, you know, they just driving. I was parked in the car and I was waiting for her and she was doing something and I was parked, but I didn't know if I could park in this particular spot or not. A police truck comes up right behind me with his lights on. Being from the U.S., y'all, I'm shitting bricks. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Can I be here? Can I not be here? Is he going to walk up to me? I had it in my translator app. I was ready to I was ready to <clears throat> say, like, I'm not sure if I could be here or not. Like, you know, do I need to move? And I just, you know, about five, maybe five minutes after he parked behind me, I went ahead and I just drove off and drove around the neighborhood. When I look back, his ass was on the phone weren't paying no attention to me. I made all of that up. Now, I didn't make it all up in my head. I am definitely a product of my environment, but it was like he was not paying any attention to me. I was just fine. I could have stayed right there. And that is what I'm talking about. It's not the, I don't know, it's just different. So what I would say is if you have, if you have the desire to even visit San Miguel, visit for us our visit ended up turning permanent and i and i always say i hate that i waited to the last but i'm also glad that we waited to the last because there is nothing else outside of just visiting and exploring other places in the country but as far as re residing and you know reconstructing our life or constructing our new life there is no other place in this country that i need to see anymore um and i'm grateful that we're here and we are permanent for, you know, for the unforeseeable future. It is very safe here. It is extremely safe here. And Dee, let me tell Dee story. I'm going to share her, 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 her take on San Miguel. So she had been here two other times before. And she was like, ooh, San Miguel is hard living. So we would just, me and Honey, would have a joke between us. Ooh, San Miguel is hard living. And it's only because she had only experienced Central. Central is very hilly. It's a lot of cobblestones. The streets are, you know, are narrow and there's a lot of alleyways and it's like that. When you get outside of Central, so this was her first opportunity getting outside of the main, you know, Central area, the touristy area and actually seeing all of San Miguel. She's like, it's bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> it's bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's, it was a welcome surprise. We helped change her perspective on, on San Miguel. So you're welcome, Dean. <laughs> so here we go. Um, so that is for us, why we decided to make San Miguel home. Now, granted, if you were looking for travel ease, Aside from the bus station, the airport, the nearest airport is an hour, about hour and 15 minutes away when that's the Caretero Airport. The next one is Lyon, and I think that's an hour and a half. However, there is a direct flight from our, my Bay Area people um, from Oakland, California to Lyon. And so that's the flight that I'm going to pick. I don't know if my mom is here tonight, but that's the flight that I am going to send um, to pick my mama up and bring her here for her birthday in January. And she loves to fly. So it's a less distance than it was for her to come see us in um, Atlanta. So she'll only be on the plane. I think it's like a three, maybe three and a half hour flight and a one way ticket. You can they're like a hundred and something dollars. Yeah, unless you're flying during the holidays. So um, 
I think that's it. Do you guys have any questions? And the weather. Let me say this. During our scouting process, it was hard for us to both find a place that we absolutely adored equally. Um, you know, I love Playa. We it was absolutely hard. She liked Mexico City. Um, I was like, you know, dead set against that, but was willing to give it a try in the end. Um, but we, it was hard for us to find like a climate, a lifestyle pace, you know, the accessibility to goods. And we had to be flexible. That's one of the things that I learned, like in the list that I created. So if you guys don't have the list, uh, I have a move abroad scorecard that you guys can download and I'll make sure to link it hit in, the, in this description. And even that scorecard for us, we had to adjust and be flexible along the way. And what I have learned here is what you think you need. Do you really, do you really need that? And what you want, so your wants and your needs are really going to adjust. So your level of flexibility is absolutely imperative. And you are going to learn so much about you. And you may be, oh, I'm flexible or, oh, I could do this. Oh, I, and I'm one of the most don't give a crap people, water off a duck's back, nonchalant people you will ever meet in your life. And even I was tested. I was like this. You know, um, so make sure that in all of it, you give yourself grace and you pace yourself to to learn something new and don't come in with it has to be a certain way, because honestly, that is the reason why we're leaving the United States is because it's a certain way. So it is going to allow you. And I love that Rashida says this. It allows you to rebirth yourself. So give your time, give yourself time to plant your feet, get assimilated, and know that you are going to go through phases. You are going to go through the honeymoon stage. You are going to go through exhaustion and fatigue. You are going to go through what am I going to do now? Um, how am I going to recreate my life? You know, th this is all the, th the experiences. And I'm still, we're just three months into this. A year from now, I'm going to be having an even more thorough, detailed conversation about how are you, how flexible are you? What have you changed? What's changed? What are the pros? What are the cons? What are your likes? What are your dislikes? Because we will, you know, have a little bit of, of we won't be as wet behind the ears. But right now, and I'm so glad we were hit hard. Like in our case, we didn't have a soft landing at all. <laughs> we did not have a, the first two months kicked our ass, absolutely kicked our ass. And I know it was, you know, from a geographic standpoint, but now I know that that was for a reason. We needed to see that we needed to experience that because we had we not experienced that we wouldn't be here. And so know that the first place that you or even second place that you say you know i am going to be here this is going to be my spot that place may not even be your place and that is what happened in our case so we had to be flexible and again when we came to san miguel we were just like we just need to get away from mexico city and we'll sit and we'll figure it out and that is how we that is how we took it it was like we're we don't know if we're gonna like it or not but what we do know is we need a break and we're going to use this time to allow it to be our break. And it has been nothing but easy since we've been here. And when I say easy, it has been easy. It has. It absolutely has been easy. Um, will you guys or anyone else have a, a similar experience? I don't know. But I will say Michelle ain't lying about San Miguel de Allende. Not one bit. And we didn't go through the Castle Elm process. Um you know, we had a lot of things already in place, but also because, you know, the way Casa Elm is set up and ran. But when I tell you she's been here for about six years, I think I want to say, and raising her son here and her face still glows about how much she loves it here. And I see what she means. So when we talk about 
releasing the weight, the baggage, getting out of the pressure cooker, not having to hustle and grind and the fast and not giving our nervous system time to, to adjust and calm down. And you want to take some time and you want to smell the roses and you want to plant your garden. And, you, and oh my God, let me talk about plants. Shout out to my other D my plant sister on here um i got three d's in the house but my plant sister d on here any of my plant mamas on here when i tell you i'm a plant girl i got 15 plants already 15 they over there at the house i went and found clay pots actual clay pots of at a clay pot maker's shop and then they deliver your plants to you. They'll deliver, the air delivery will be set up for you if you want to. And let me tell you, and anybody knows who is a plant person, how expensive clay pots are. For the small, which is a nice size clay pot that your pothos, that your monstera, that your snake plant can fit in, you know, that your Deffenbachia can fit in, just your standard plant, that clay pot is $15, y'all. And then the next size up, which is pretty big, is, so it's 350 pesos. So I want to say it's about maybe $25-ish for the next clay. And so I did the calculations for 15 clay pots. I'm spending like a hundred and something dollars. Okay. So when I tell you I am a plant mama, I got 15 plants already that we they 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 like my mama said they moved in before we did um because i'm serious about my plants <laughs> so the only thing that's not inexpensive here as far as a plant is concerned are the succulents because if they are really statement pieces throughout this community the stuff the succulents um big huge cacti um all of us so just know you'll get your green thumb on here for real um, and you'll be able to save some money at the same time because planting is a, it can be an expensive hobby. And before I left the States, I had over 50 plus plants, but I will tell you this come spring of next year, I'm going to have at least 50. I'm going to have at least, I'm going to have my plant guy and I'm going to, we're going to be good. We're going to be gravy. All right, y'all. So that is why we chose San Miguel de Allende. San Miguel de Allende really welcomed us with open arms. They really, really embraced us. They, um, I don't know, it's just, it is familiar. It really, it really is that. So if you guys have, welcome to your new home, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dee. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, feel free to drop down in the chat, any comments, feel free. And I, if I could share anything that can be helpful, I am more than happy to. Um, yeah. So I, if you guys are in your house hunting phase or in your perfect location phase, give yourself grace and stack your money. Be flexible. <laughs> that would be the things that if I can name the top three, it would be stack your money, give yourself grace and be flexible those things and uh you're gonna grow and learn real quick and i'm happy about the growing and the learning and i'm really excited for this next chapter in our life all right you guys hold on um did um, did you start out with any vegetation what do you mean d like at the house what do you mean um I don't know what I mean. Uh, mm -mm. No? Uh-uh. Any yellow? Mm -mm. No? Not that I can... Oh, we did! Oh, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> so what she's talking about is we have in our house or at our house in the backyard, we have a lemon tree. We do. <laughs> you funny for that one. We have a lemon tree and we also have a lavender bush um, in, at the house that and we have bougainvillea um, and the bougainvillea draped from the rooftop over down into the yard. And if anybody knows anything about Mexico, bougainvillea is one of the most beautiful plants that come in a variety of colors. I've seen orange, I've seen violet. We have, I think we have violet and blue, I think, I think it's blue. Um, and we have a lemon tree and we have um, some succulents that are back there, but yeah, we do have vegetation. So yeah, plenty of lemonada happening. This is age. I'm learning so much from your experience. Thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, you did. Oh, that sounds beautiful. It is absolutely, it is absolutely beautiful. 
Um, <laughs> give her a thumbs up, y'all. Thank you, D, so much. I really, really appreciate that. Oh, y'all, because I always forget to say this. <laughs> Please forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel here on Friday Night Lives is where I talk all things Mexico. And during the week, I may drop some business tips in and I will always share my lifestyle and things Mexico. I do love this country. I do absolutely respect this culture. I am in love with this culture and I have loved this culture all of my life being a California girl. Um, and so to be in a place where I can be welcomed and I can take part in the culture and not appropriate to take part of the culture, but appreciate to take part of the culinary scene, being a culinarian and a foodie myself. My palate is always satisfied. I swear I've gotten fat since I've been in Mexico. FYI, <clears throat> Mexico will make you fat. So you got to make sure you get your walk on, you get your exercise on because the food is that amazing. Um, but I'm so grateful to be here and, uh, you know, my honey can experience it and our daughter can experience it. And I ain't in the U S no more. Like, I, it, it just, y'all just my detest with that country. And, you know, for a lot of reasons, and I hate the fact that I owe taxes, I owe a lot of money in taxes and my tax dollars is helping to fuel their fuckery. Like that is, that's one of the things that in my good conscience really bothers me. It really bothers me. So um, the, the more I am able to undo, but be able, you know, to just kind of maintain the bare minimum of being a citizen in the United States, I'll always have to pay taxes. But this exorbitant amount of taxes that I pay or have to pay because of it ain't the way. All right. Hey, Shauna. <laughs> so be sure to watch the replay. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Um, I'm Tracy Collins. And thank you guys so much for joining me on Friday Night Live. Have a wonderful, wonderful, safe weekend. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.